All right, thanks for leading in worship. It is wonderful to worship in a, a new or different place for us as a pastor. You don't get that a lot. And we're kind of in a journey where we get to uh, speak and share what God is doing in our lives in different places. Um, I'm sure none of you figured out that I'm related to who still. Is that true? Okay. Uh, I don't know, I thought I'd, I'd make sure that's clear. There's a family resemblance. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna open with prayer and then we'll, we'll kind of do a little bit of what we're going into. Um, and then the why will really be more the message part where we really dig deep into God's word. Why church planting we'll be looking at in the book of Acts. Uh, but let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker, promise keeper. Uh, and Lord, when things are impossible, for us, you specialize in those things and are the God of possibilities and you're the beautiful savior. Lord, may we see you. May we see you clearly this morning, each and every day in uh, the creation that you have made and in your word that you have written for us and revealed yourself to us. We pray this now, uh, go before us in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I'm going to start with the what, um, and then kind of as we go into the message, you'll understand why uh, something like this has been laid into our heart a little bit more. Um, we've already been introduced. Um, my wife, Julia, grew up in northern Minnesota. In fact, uh, Pastor Tom was up there for some time, and there's a connection there as well. Um, I grew up in western Wisconsin. These are our sons, uh, James and Benjamin. James is three years old and Benjamin turned one just last Sunday. We had a celebration after the, the church service in a park. Uh, so what, what are we doing? This is our concise statement of uh, what we are talking about. And I'll, I'll reference right now too. Uh, we've got a trifold brochure um, that kind of goes into more detail of what we're doing and a prayer card. One side says pray for the Pillmans, the other side says pray for Ankeny, where we are going, and those are right outside the door here. So if you want to grab those, please do. Uh, we had a mess up in printing where they printed twice as much as we wanted, so take, a, take what you want of those, no problem. Here's, here's the mission, though. Uh, reaching precious souls in Ankeny, we'll talk about where that is, with the precious hope of Jesus' forgiveness. And really, our heart is what, is, what is a church about? And we'll talk about this more, but it can be boiled down to reaching souls with the hope of Jesus' forgiveness. Can't it? That's what we're here to hear about, to be reminded of, of Jesus and what he has done for us. And we are actually going to look at this scripture uh, as one of them in Acts and go through a few scriptures in Acts in a second. But uh, note here, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Uh, that talks about a lot of regions and doesn't leave any of them out, right? It's not just here. It's not just across the state or just across the world. It's all of them. Yes <laughs> to all of those, right? Um, this, there's lots of statistics that go with this as we talk about church planting and why, but to say it simply, church planting is the most effective means of evangelism. And uh, some of the statistics that, that go with that, um, I guess I don't have on the screen, that's okay, but 80% um, of converts in most denominations, multiple have done these studies, um, those happen that are tracked in the first two years of a congregation being born. Um, in fact, new members, often when you talk about church planting, people think, oh, you're going into an area, you're gonna, there's good churches there, and you'll take those, those sheep. Sheep stealing is talked about. It's not about sheep stealing primarily. It's about reaching people with, with the hope of Jesus' forgiveness. Um, and something that, a number that talks to that is most church plants, 60 to 80% of the new members in the first five years are previously unchurched. Now, maybe believers, but don't have a church family. In an existing church, usually that's 10, maybe 20% of new members are, are previously unchurched. So it's a unique context to reach unbelievers. Uh, as we talk about what, uh, we'll talk about where we're going. Um, first step, and we'll talk about this in a second, actually will be residency, so we'll be in San Antonio, but our heart is for the region of Ankeny, Iowa. Has anyone does anyone recognize the name of that town? Okay, got a few, kind of. Um, Northern Des Moines, it's an extremely fast-growing area. 
um, which adds to the strategicness of it. But the thing that brought it to our attention first was last July, about a year ago, uh, every week throughout that month, uh, we kept hearing of people that were there looking for a congregation or would be there looking for a congregation. Um, Julia's aunt and uncle actually are there as well and I've been asking us. Um, and so the Lord kept bringing before us an area and it so happened that our church in Pipestone was uh, looking to plant churches. They felt this call, this leading on their heart, at least some in it, I wouldn't say maybe everyone. Um, and so we looked at two local areas around Pipestone, Minnesota, for various reasons it didn't make sense there. And so we came to them and said, hey, is this a God thing or isn't it? That you've, God's laid this place on our heart. It is strategic in the sense that uh, it's doubled in size in the last 15 years, from 35,000 to 70,000 people in that town. Just crazy population growth, actually the fastest growing region often in, in the Midwest is right there. Uh, in Iowa, Iowa of all places, right? Okay, uh, but as I already said, um, there's a potential then for the gospel and church planting, right? And in that region specifically, 75 to 80% don't attend a conservative evangelical church setting. And we long for those people to be in a place where they can hear God's word. That's really uh, what this is all about. Actually, interestingly, right here, this region is about the same numbers wise right around you in your neighborhood. 75 to 80% don't attend a evangelical church. Conservative evangelical Bible believing church. Here's our, just really quick, and we'll jump into God's word here then in a second. But our timeline, um, up until August, that used to, I was talking about this two months ago and that didn't seem so close. Now that's like two months out. Um, we are going to be sharing the heart of church planting in congregations like your own. Um, it's not just about Ankeny. This is about sharing and encouraging people reaching people uh, like you. And then in August, we'll be going to San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Trisha knows more about Texas than we do. We've never been to San Antonio yet. Uh, but her cousin, Matthew Bowman, is a church planter there. Uh, they're three years into a congregation called Trinity. And we're going to go there and learn alongside. Learn alongside someone who's currently doing it. Um, start to kind of put together a plan and as we learn for moving to a new region in Ankeny, which will then be August 2023. We'll move there, build relationships, uh, really get a team of people together and say, what will this look like and how, how can we do this together? Um, and then of course, everyone, uh, there's a lot of excitement around launching a service, but you don't want to do that too soon. You want to be sure you know who's there, bring people together. Um, and then that'll come as people are longing to worship together. So um, partnering, a lot of this is in our, our brochures as well, but prayer is the biggest thing that we need. Um, it is a lonely thing to plant churches. Uh, there's a lot of burnout in church planters. And so we need uh, those prayers, you bringing us before the Lord. Connections, if you know people there uh, or nearby or someone moving there, there are a lot of people moving there, um, let us know. We'd love to connect and meet people in that area. Um, and then we are uh, raising funds, much like missionaries, uh, are sending churches, Christ the King in Pipestone, Minnesota, which is five hours from Ankeny. You guys are way closer, actually. Um, but they are sending church in the sense of handling the funds. So all donations go there, but they are not uh, paying our way 100%. And so as you are able, and the Lord puts that on your heart, um, I'll just point to the numbers at the bottom here. We're already 63% of the way there for the year in, in uh, Ankeny. So we praise the Lord, or I'm sorry, for the year in San Antonio residency. So we praise the Lord for that um, further to go. But I don't want to spend all the time there. Let's, let's dig into God's word. We are here to see Jesus uh, and his heart, his heart. And so we are going to look at the book of Acts. I'll call this church planting according to Acts. Um, and it's really, like I said, the why of church planting. So we'll, we'll read together Acts chapter 1 through Acts chapter 8, or 28 right now. Um, no, we probably don't have time for that, but we'll start in Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 6 uh, through 11 at this point, and, uh, and then we'll look a little bit farther ahead in just a second. So if you would... Uh, join in uh, reading along in your Bibles as you are open there, Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. Reading in Jesus' name. 
says, so when they, this is the disciples and those around Jesus, had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. There uh, is a lot involved in church planting, but this is what it all comes from. As we've already stated, a heart for reaching people, being the witnesses of God. Uh, there's an interesting parallel, though, with church planting. There's a reason we use that terminology. It's not by accident. Uh, there's a, a parallel with church planting and tr planting seeds in a field. Uh, and so I thought we can, any ages can help out here. We'll do a little uh, consideration of what does it take to plant seeds in a field? What, what materials, what things, what activities do you need to do? What does it take to plant a field? Put on your farmer hats here for me for a second, all right? We could create a big list, but what are some? Plow. Till, plow it up. Here's something over here. Plow it, plow it. That was, yes. You need the soil. Yeah, it's pretty hard to plant seed if you don't have somewhere to put it where it can grow. Yeah. Water. Water. Thank you. Yes. You have to have good seed. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes I do this and people forget that you need seed to plant seed, right? Good seed. What's our seed in, in this context? It's the word of God, right? Word of God in the soil of hearts. What else? Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Heard something over here. Laborers. Laborers. Yes. Someone has to go out there and Put it in. Yeah, laborers in God's field. There's, there's a parallel there. Sunshine. Sunshine. Absolutely. Love. What's that? Love. Yeah. Yeah. Good laborers at the right time. All right. There's a timing thing, isn't there? You don't go plant a field in the fall and expect plants to grow all winter in Minnesota, right? There's a location and a timing issue that is important here. So... Maybe tractors, this day and age. Horses, back in the day. Uh, we could create a longer list. Uh, but kind of note, as we go through here, there, there are pieces of this. And, and uh, the picture that I'd have for you of what we're doing right now is uh, maybe taking a, a high airplane view of the book of Acts and the, the church planting that was happening there. Um, we're kind of looking from a distance at church planting. And at the end, we'll, we'll consider more individually, close up, what it might mean for us. So church planting. Here's a few more stats. I know I've hit you with some already. There are 156 million unchurched people in the United States. Could be de-churched, unchurched. Um, 156 million. This number actually in my brochure says 140 million. I was a couple years old in that. So this number just keeps going up exponentially. Uh, 38 million de-churched had been in a, a stable church family just in the past 10 years. I'm a, I'm a Canadian citizen. This is more than the population of Canada has been de-churched in the United States in the last 10 years. Also, we see that uh, 3,500 to 4,000 churches close their doors every year. Uh, there are about 1,500 planted, but the population is going up. There's a need for Bible preaching, believing uh, groups, congregations of individuals in the U.S. Just a few more, and I, I'll keep moving through these. Um, I said this one, 80% of new converts are from churches, uh, generally speaking, uh, two years old or less. And then 60 to 80% of new churches were from uh, new, new members to church, 
churches uh, in church plants um, were previously unchurched. How about this last one? How many churches were church plants in their lives? 100%, right? Yeah, everywhere has started from somewhere. Had to be brought together, gathered around the word. Uh, your church was once a church plant. It's near and close to each of our hearts. So let's, let's dig in here to Acts. I already read this, Acts 1, 6 through follow, following. Um, it's familiar to us. It's familiar to us uh, in the sense of the ascension and in Jesus leaving. Um, maybe even more familiar as a great commission is the end of, of Matthew, the book of Matthew, when Jesus says, go therefore, and what? Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These are, and here in Acts, these are our last words recorded of Jesus while on this earth. Last words recorded of Jesus while on this earth. And uh, I, I remember clearly, so I'm the youngest of six kids, and I remember one of the first times, maybe the first times that my parents left us for an extended time, for a week, a little over, on a missions trip. And uh, they decided that they were gonna go some months beforehand. And then uh, come the day they left, they just said, okay, you're all on your own, figure it out, right? Some of you are laughing as parents. There was a lot of planning that went in and there was instructions written out, detailed of what everyone was gonna do while they were gone. There was a commission of sorts in what we were called to do. And uh, this, this is the same for as Jesus left. Now, I think for my parents, there was a lot of fear in it, right? What could go wrong? There were five boys home on their own, one sister trying to cook the meals for everyone. Uh, what could possibly go wrong with that, right? Jesus didn't have that same fear. And here we are on Trinity Sunday. I think a lot of that is related to, he knew that he would send the helper, the Holy Spirit. He knew that uh, we were not alone. Even as he said in that great commission, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. But he did give clear marching orders. Clear marching orders here. You will be my witnesses. There are a lot of things he could have said. He could have said, you will straighten up and be good Christians, right? You will attend church regularly. No, he said, you will be my witnesses. You will care about the hearts and souls of other people. Uh, I don't put weight in everything he says, but I appreciate this quote from David Jeremiah. The church is God's idea. It's his purpose for reaching, it's God's plan. It's his purpose for reaching the world with the gospel. There is no plan B or C. There's only one plan. It's the church. And so uh, evangelism is God's priority in his church, reaching others. God cares about this. Not the only thing that church is about, not the only thing that a Sunday morning is about. There's fellowship and other factors. We'll see those in a second. But it is God's priority in the church. Uh, we'll just do one, one more uh, point here from the book of Acts, and then just generally say looking ahead. Turn with me to Acts 2, verse 37 and following. Uh, and this is actually kind of neat because the the lesson that was read uh, came up to this point um, from Peter's sermon. And this is right after Peter's sermon, beginning at verse 37, says, Now when they heard this, being that sermon, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, every one whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread 
and prayers. I'm going to jump down to 47 here. It describes more of what they are doing day by day in their homes. But 47 says they were praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. Notice a couple things here. And this is the first account that we have of believers gathering in a, a church setting. Uh, first of all, how is it formed? What, what brings these people together? What's the formation surrounding this? Um, actually, let me say before we get into this, just uh, the church, here's the overall summary. The church is the result of the Holy Spirit's work in evangelism. So the formation, how is it formed? It's the Holy Spirit's work. In verse uh, 11 of chapter 2 here, it says that they were hearing because as a result of Pentecost, the people that were there were hearing in their own tongues the mighty works of God. And then Peter goes into a, one of the, the first sermons we have recorded, a beautiful sermon, clearly with law and gospel. The law being you, you, the people, crucified the Savior. It is your sin that put him there. Is that true for us? Can we say our sin nailed Jesus to the tree? It's our sin. It's our sinfulness. Those things, those thoughts, those deeds, done and undone. Peter preached and he also declared that it was this Jesus whom you crucified that, what? God raised from the dead. He declared to them that they were witnesses of God's work of life, bringing Jesus back to life, creating life. And then notice the response of the people then in what we read. Verse 37, they were cut to the heart. They recognized, I am a sinner. I need a savior. There is a great need. And Peter's response as they asked, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized. Turn to the Lord. In baptism, God creates faith. And then we keep going forward. And there are 3,000 souls. Verse 41. 3,000 souls baptized, added to their number. In my, my home church at Christ the King, we, it was a joy. I actually was watching the service just a little bit ago, and there, we had three baptisms in the front of, of the sanctuary today. Beautiful thing. Seeing God at work through the word in the hearts and lives of individuals. Multiply that by 1,000. <laughs> 3,000 souls brought to the Lord in baptism. We praise the Lord when we see one. Uh, they had that opportunity as God worked in their hearts. But then what happened? So the church, we, we're wanting, as we talk about church planting, we long to see a church emerge. Was it, a, first of all, is the formation a human work? Was it primarily a human work? No, God worked through individuals. God worked through them. But it was the Holy Spirit's work that cut them to the heart in their lives. It was the Holy Spirit's work in and through this evangelism. But then notice the response of the people, verse 42. They, they gathered <laughs> together. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking a bread of prayers. Uh, so happens we have a banner right here behind me that talks about that, right? As a church, these are things that we do. These are some of the marks of believers as they gather together. So because of the Holy Spirit's work, salvation in the hearts, we long for these things to come together. This is the, we talked about formation. It's really faith that's formed in our hearts. The function of the church are these things. The function of the church are gathering together. Uh, the word of God, fellowship, breaking bread, prayer. If we, I've skipped some of these verses, but it talks about generousness generosity and sharing with each other, togetherness, that they were in each other's homes. I love hearing that here, even in the announcements, that you uh, dig into God's word in each other's homes in Bible study. A beautiful thing. Uh, they were eating. I like eating. I don't know if anyone else here does. Uh, but there's something about food 
And gathering around food as a regular meal, even, I believe that's included in what's said here, as uh, a chance to get to know and fellowship with each other. Uh, as you open your mouth to eat, I think God opens our mouths to share <laughs> a little bit better, a little bit uh, easier. This is the function of the church. Notice what uh, wasn't included here. Sometimes, I, if you're like me, and I'm actually going to some conferences, thinking about church planting, some of the things that jump out to us as, a, as what is a church aren't just the building, right? We know that's, okay, it's not just the building, it's the people. Yeah, there's a building, but how about the leadership? Uh, this is kind of a check for us as pastors. Right away, as the church formed, they gathered, they fellowshiped around the word. They didn't call a, uh, we don't know that they called a pastor. They didn't worry about that. They just wanted to dig in the word together. Now, some of that would come later. They didn't, we don't see it talking about, oh, you got to have the right council. You got to have the right elders. You got to, yes, that came, but that wasn't the primary concern of the church and its function. What were they doing? They were digging into gathering around the word of God. And isn't that, I pray that's the heart of you as a church, of us as individuals, that we simply want to know Jesus more. That as we have, our hearts have been cut by the law recognizing our sin, that we simply want to know Jesus more. It is God's work. It is the Holy Spirit's work. Jesus says as well in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. And then there's a promise that the gates of hell will not, shall not prevail against it. I, I uh, share this as uh, to a congregation, to a people that gather as a church and in considering uh, planting a congregation. That this is God's idea to reach other people, to evangelize, as we saw in the first point, and that it is God's work. It is God's work. I pray that you long for more to, to be here in your midst, not to boost the numbers, not to boost the, the budget, but simply that they would know Jesus. But remember, it is God's work, God's work in and through us as we faithfully share God's word. And this is where it, it becomes more uh, personal for us. I talked about kind of the 10,000 foot view, flying in an airplane, watching the, the planters down below, the tractor or whatever it is in the field. But God calls each and every one of you into the work of sharing the gospel, sharing the gospel and of planting. Uh, if we had more time, I would have gone into Acts chapter 16. Uh, and that's where Paul is planting a church in Philippi, sharing the word and God's call into the work, the Macedonia call there. But here's, here's what I want to leave you with today. And this is Romans 8, Paul, a church planter. A familiar verse says that we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Who is called? Who is called according to God's purpose? Who are called to faith? The believers, the church. You are the church as you place your trust in Jesus Christ. And who are called then to be witnesses? This isn't some special, unique calling. It's not just the missionary or the church planter that is called into this. It is clearly the one that has been filled by the Holy Spirit. And we believe clearly as scripture teaches that the ones who are filled with the Holy Spirit are those who place their trust, who know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so don't just uh, stay up there in that 10,000 foot view watching the planter down below. You are called to plant the seed of God's word. I put here, okay, church, it's time to plant. It's time to plant the seed of God's word. The location, the who, right? And the where and the when, that God will make clear as you are faithful, as God puts in your heart to plant churches. God has made it somewhat uh, clear for us. We don't know the individuals yet. We know a location, Ankeny, Iowa. We know it is God's word we carry with us. But I pray that God would make that clear for you as well.
those individuals in your life, your workplace, in your living place, wherever you go, your call, your call is to plant God's word. Let me close in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you as we just get a glimpse into God's call on the hearts and lives of those he spoke to before he left this earth. I pray that you would remind us as well that it is your call and your work in ministry to place us in a field <laughs> where we may plant and share clearly the word of God. Thank you for this church. Thank you for Minnesota Valley and the things that you are doing here. Thank you for the individuals here and how you are working in their hearts through your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that we can trust you each step of the way, knowing that you are with us always, even to the end of the age. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. For more information or to contact us, please visit us on the web at mnvalleychurch.org or find us on Facebook at Minnesota Valley Church.